Hello my sweets, it's Keisha. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you consider subscribing. Today is the open invite Nailed It or Failed It Challenge High End Fall Edition hosted by Carrie from Mama Dares to DIY and I, Keisha from Sweet Urban Rose. We challenged our YouTube creator friends to choose a high end fall decor item they would like to have in their homes and dupe it for less. So when you're done watching my video, be sure to check out the playlist linked in the description box below. Today I'm going to show you how I duped these $70 wooden pumpkins from Kirkland's using Dollar Tree items. If you're ready to see how, just keep watching. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to take this pumpkin apart. This is the stand-up one uh, from Dollar Tree. And I'm actually going to be doing two of these, but um, the same steps apply for both of them. So uh, if you see the shape of it kind of changes it's a, a little bit, it's just because I'm interchanging them uh, in between scenes. But um, I'm going to take this one apart and I'm just pulling off the burlap that comes with it. And I'm actually going to break that away and just pull this off. Ooh, that one had a lot of glitter. The other one didn't have as much glitter on it, but I wanted to uh, do it in two sizes. Next, I'm going to take this piece of poster board that um, has been pre, kind of pre-cut. It's about seven and a half inches by 11 inches. You really don't need that much height on it. Um, and what I'm going to do is, there's a little lip that goes down into the groove of this. I'm not going to trace that out. Um, so you just kind of want to have it so it hangs off the edge of the uh, foam board a little bit here. And then you're just gonna go ahead and trace that out. All right. So the next thing that needs to happen is this needs to be cut out. And I have my blade here and you wanna make sure that you have a new sharp blade on this. Doesn't necessarily have to be like brand new, but it does need to be super sharp to cut, get a smooth cut through this poster board, foam board. And I find that if you cut outside of the line, it's okay um, for this one because you can always shape it back up. But if you cut too far, excuse me, too far into the line, then you'll wind up having to um, recut it or paint it the similar color of what you're going to paint your pumpkin. Nice. Okay, so there we have our pumpkin. I'm just going to set this piece aside. <clears throat> and then, um, I have a block here just to lift it off of the table some. You don't necessarily have to do this. Um, I just find it a little bit easier for me to, for you to be able to see it on camera because typically I would come off the edge of the table but my camera doesn't reach the edge of the table for you to see what I'm doing so I have to kind of emulate that. So I'm gonna take this smaller blade if I can open it. There we go. And I'm just gonna extend it a little bit and I'm gonna bring my knife here um, at an angle and then I'm just gonna start shaving it off. Now, I have done this technique in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that, I will go ahead and link it for you. 
if you'd like to see it. I'll also make sure it's at the end of the video so that you can click it there. But I did another style like this prior. So again, you want a really sharp blade and here you just want to make sure that the blade is doing the work. Don't force the blade otherwise you'll end up doing more work than you necessarily need to. So I'm just going to continue to go around like this and basically cut it down at an angle <clears throat> and then if you want it you know a little bit more you can always come back through you just want to make sure you don't cut through to the other side of the paper but get it as thin as you would like on the edges without cutting through that other layer of paper okay So I'm gonna finish this um, off camera since you know what I'm doing. And when I'm ready for the next step, I'll be back. Okay, so I've gotten this piece completed. And you can see here that I've gone around all of the edges. Um, now, if you have some really jaggedy points, you can go over this with a fine grit uh, sand paper and um, get that off. So the next piece I have here is three by six and this is going to be the middle section of the pumpkin and all I'm going to do is just curve this off like it's an oval and then cut it out and do the same thing Thin it out on the edges like it's a carved piece of wood. And I'm just gonna check this for fit. Make sure that I like how it's gonna go. Okay. And I'm just gonna Adjust it a little bit here. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the way that this looks. So let me go ahead and get ready to start gluing this down. Give you just a moment. Okay, so now what I need to do is to go ahead and glue the pieces together. So I'm gonna end up gluing this on top of here first and you just want to make sure that you don't go over that little lip that we created in the first place and just try to line everything up okay so we want that to be able to go back into the stand and stand up like this all right so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna add the middle section in. Get this lined up where I want it. And stick it down. Okay. So the next thing you wanna do is just kinda turn it over and see if you have any edges like you can see here. We're here, don't quite match up. And you just wanna come in with your blade and just kinda even those edges up. And also, if you'd like, you could do the same thing on the back as far as adding the poster board like how we did on the front. And then you can have yourself a two-sided project. Okay. 
All right, so this is what we have so far. Let me get this cleaned up and get ready for the next step. <clears throat> okay, so next what I have here are the two stands. Um, and what I did was I mixed up some moss, uh, moss Waverly chalk paint and this campground craft smart paint together and um, made this darker green color and I also put a drop of black in there. I'm hoping this will uh, dry darker than what it is. Um, and the reason why I mixed them together was because I really like chalk paint and it seems to stick better than acrylic paint on a lot of projects so if I don't prime with the uh, chalk paint then I usually try to mix chalk paint with acrylic paint anyway what I'm gonna do is paint this up or paint them both up and then let them dry and then we're going to come back through and do some distressing on them, like the inspiration piece. Okay, so next I'm going to come in with the ivory chalk paint and do some br dry brushing over uh, the, the stands here. And um, so I'm just going to get some paint onto the brush and then I'm going to dab it off dab it off onto my um, surface here. So I'm just going to do a little bit. I don't need like a whole lot on there. And um, also just to let you know, I did do end up doing two coats of the green paint on this and I also did the bottom side. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, it's just personal preference. So you can go in and distress this as little or as much as you want to. Um, I know I said I was going to do just a little bit and it's coming out to be more than that. But I'm going to stop right there. And I'm just going to do the same thing with this one. Just come on the edges here where you would see a lot more of the distressing than not, typically. And then we're going to set these aside to dry. All right, so that's that. So while I have the ivory paint out still, I'm going to go ahead and paint the pumpkins, but I wanted to, or paint one of the pumpkins, but I wanted you to see um, the size difference in between two of them. This is the one that I've been working on on camera. And this is the one that I've been working on off of camera. And so I'm going to paint this one uh, the ivory color. And then this one's going to end up being the orange color. Um, in the last video, I painted the orange color on screen. So I decided to paint the ivory color this time on screen. So um, what I'm going to do is do layers of paint on this. That is key when working with um, the foam core so that you do not get any bubbling of the paper. So you just want to come in with thin layers of paint and paint your pumpkin, essentially. <laughs> I don't know what I what else I was trying to say I apologize but yes you just want to come in with thin thin layers of paint rather than one big amount of paint 
Okay, so I've gotten it, the ivory on here, um, as much coverage as I want. So next what I'm gonna do is come back in with the green color that I mixed up for the base. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing um, and dry brush the color on. And I'm using, um, initially, I don't remember if I told you, but I used a chip brush. And uh, this is almost like another uh, chip brush type situation. Like it's got the raggedy um, bristles, like how the chip brush has. I don't know how else to describe it, I apologize. But um, yeah, that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, place this color on here. And I'm just gonna do the thin layers over itself until I have the coverage that I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the coverage of the green at this point. So I'm going to let this completely dry because I can still feel a little bit of moisture with the um, ivory portion and um, then we're gonna come back and distress it. Okay, so I'll be right back. So the pumpkin has had time to dry, so next what I'm going to do is to uh, age it a little bit. And so first I'm gonna start with the ivory on the stem. So I'm just gonna take the side of my brush here and just dab a little bit on there and just come along right on the edge where the paper meets the foam. And just rub that right in there. Okay, just like that. Next, I'm gonna come back in with this brush that looks like a chip brush. And I'm gonna go into the antique wax this time. The so Waverly, oops, Waverly antique wax. And um, this one is like at the very bottom of the barrel, but I can use it here to do some dry brushing. So I'm going to get some on the brush and then take it off. And then I'm just going to start coming up in a sweeping motion. And just barely get any on there. And I'm just gonna build up the color until I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. Okay, and I'm pretty satisfied with the way that this looks. And then I just wanted to show you, I did go ahead and do the orange one off camera. And with this one, I um, did the antique wax and the ivory and did the same dry brush went around in the crevice here on the sides and then with the ivory on the side of the brush I um, highlighted where the paper meets the foam where we carved that out and then the ivory on top all right so I'm going to set up for the next step for the next step, what I need to do is to complete these leaves. So they started out as these maple leaves um, that you can get in the bag from Dollar Tree. They come in a bag that looks like this. And I needed them to look like bronze metal. So initially what I did was I started just painting them with this chocolate brown. Uh, metallic by folk art um, but that didn't 
go too well you could still see the background color so then so what I did was I went ahead and painted it with the truffle Waverly paint first and then I came back in with the chocolate brown over it and then once I did that I came in with the burnt umber and painted in the veins so this is what the leaf is looking like this is what it looks like without the veins so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and finish doing the veins here and I just took a fine um, brush and I'm just gonna work out of the cap since we don't need that much paint <clears throat> excuse me and what I'm gonna do is start at the bottom and just lightly bring my brush up and kind of bring it to a point at the end then I'm gonna come from the center and out center and out and I'm just following the little indents that are already on the leaf That'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, so that'll dry down a little bit lighter to look closer to how this one looks. So it looks kind of like a shadow. Um, now, if you just have a bronze paint, you can most certainly um, just paint them bronze. Unfortunately, I didn't have so I had to make something up, but I think this is a pretty good match for the uh, um, inspiration piece. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the orange pumpkin. And what I'm going to do is use this stencil here that uh, came from the crafter score section for Dollar Tree. And I'm actually going to use this for the lettering on the pumpkin. I was going to use the um, wooden letters, but for the size of these pumpkins, they're way too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these stencils instead. Next thing I'm going to do is come in with the ivory uh, Waverly chalk paint again. And I'm just going to fill this in. Okay, so the fall pumpkin is, uh, well, the fall portion of it, I'm done painting it. Um, so that's what it looks like. I did do a couple of coats over, and then what I did was I came back around with this flat brush here, and wherever I went over, I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. It's not perfect, but, you know, um, it's, I could drive myself crazy all night, uh, trying to fix it so um, for the other pumpkin I decided to go ahead and just do hello because I honestly I wasn't into the concept of having two pumpkins that say fall I mean I guess if you're putting them in two different places um, but yeah I imagine that I'll be displaying them together um, if not, this one still could be Hello Pumpkin, and this is just a fall pumpkin. So, um, the next thing that we are going to do is work with. I think I'm going to um, work with the leaves. They're done drying, so we have a big one and a small one for each pumpkin. 
So what I'm gonna do is I have some floral wire here that I pre-cut and they're about 20 inches a piece. I don't know that I'll need that much, um, but we're just gonna start there. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and move this one to the side and work predominantly on this fall one. I'm gonna take this wire and just wrap it around. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bigger leaf and I'm just gonna decide where I'm going to glue it on the wire. Okay, so I'm feeling like right about there is good. So I'm going to wonder if I should fold it down. No. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it. Um, about three quarters of the way up the leaf. Excuse me. And I'm gonna come around, come back around with my hot glue. And I'm just gonna put some here on the wire and then fold that leaf back up into the glue. And just center it as much as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect necessarily. We're gonna let that cool down. And then I'm just gonna come and encase it on the lower part. Make my life a little bit easier here. Let that cool down a little bit and just bend it down. And then we're going to do the same thing with the smaller leaf on this side. The second to last thing to add to this is the bow. And you'd be so proud. Look at this. I <laughs> was able to tie a bow. Um, with the raffia and it's a little long right now I'm gonna cut it down once I get it attached um, and I used the trick that one of uh, you viewers suggested to me to um, wet it down first so I did do that so it was it gave me a little bit of an easier time although like Admittedly, I did have a hard time um, tying the bow. Um, I don't know what it is about that, but I guess my baby is going to be wearing Velcro shoes for the rest of his life. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the bow. Right here to the top. And I'm gonna let that simmer down a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this, the end of this, and decide where I'm gonna cut it. And I think I'm gonna cut it right about here. And 
I just discovered this the other day, but did you know you can split raffia? So <laughs> many of you probably already knew that, and I just discovered it literally, I think, two days ago. Yes, two days ago, that you can take raffia and split it up. So it looks like there's more than you actually. These were actually six strands uh, that I went ahead and tied together. So now that the leaves are cool, I'm gonna go ahead and swing them around so they kind of look like something. So that's what we have so far. And then we have our base. And you can uh, glue the base back on to this. But if you do plan on doing something to the back, you may want to just kind of set it in there or just do, you don't have to do like this whole production of glue, just a couple of little dabs so that you can get it off again if you decide you want to do something to the back but you want to display it now. So here's what that's looking like so far. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the other one and I don't know, let me take a step back for a second for the hello. I did go ahead and find a free principle online and um, I just printed it off and it just so happened to come out the exact size that I needed. So um, that's how I got the font for Hello. But again, you can use uh, stencil, you can use um, stickers. Uh, if you have a vinyl cutting machine, um, then that's perfect too. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one finished and I will be back with final pictures. I love how these pumpkins turned out and I used about $3 in materials not including paint. What do you think? Did I nail it or fail it? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the playlist listed in the description box below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and leave me a comment below. If you'd like to see more, subscribe and choose all notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, love, inspire, create. See you next time.